In a recent review of the Fluke 17V, one of the viewers asked me about the DC current measuring capabilities of this meter. In this short video, we'll take a look at the meter capabilities, its specifications, and we'll take a look at a special parameter known as the burden voltage and why that's important when measuring DC current with a multimeter. So when you uh, look at a multimeter, uh, you um, have to be careful when you're doing DC current measurements because the meter can actually affect the measurement. Uh, when you check the Fluke manual here, uh, normally of course you'll find the ranges of the current and the accuracies which are listed in this table here, but uh, in the uh, 15B and 17B manual, uh, Fluke doesn't seem to have the listed so-called burden voltage, so um, it's actually a fairly easy thing to measure. Let's, uh, let's do that. Alright, so if you want to measure the uh, burden voltage of a multimeter, what you basically have to do is get yourself a power resistor like this one here. Um, this is a 10 ohm, probably a 50 watt unit. Pass a known current through the resistor and then uh, take your meter and basically run the current through the meter uh, on the amps or milliamps depending on what you're up to and then what you want to do is measure the voltage across the meter and from that uh, I'll show you how you can calculate uh, the burden voltage so uh, this task basically does need two meters uh, so obviously we got the Fluke 17B that we're interested in now you need another meter um, well the great thing about the 17B quite frankly is it's a pretty cheaply priced meter it's a pretty decent meter low for what we can see and uh, we'll be using this fluke here to measure the current and we'll use this fluke here to measure the voltage across the drop across the meter and the only other thing you'll need to do this kind of test is a uh, power supply um, here again the B and K precision power supply so the connection is pretty straightforward uh, you get the uh, power coming out of your meter here it'll go into your amp connection here and you have to run a wire basically to a resistor here the resistor then comes back to the power supply so basically what you have is a power supply with a resistor and the meter in series. And then the next thing you have to do is get your second meter and parallel it up here so it can actually do the voltage measurement across the meter. And uh, that's going to determine something we know as the burden voltage. Okay, so what we have here is this meter here is connected up essentially in series with this resistor here to measure current. So we'll switch it into the current mode, in this case amps, because we're looking at kind of a high power phenomena. This meter here uh, is going to measure the voltage drop across the meter, uh, and that's going to be known as the burden voltage. And that's pretty simple, you just connect the meter in parallel, and uh, get the ground laid across here. And we'll switch this into the millivolt range. Okay, so uh, obviously no current going through it, and of course there is no voltage drop, no surprise. Uh, come up here, turn on your power supply. Uh, again, this is actually a really snappy little power supply, the B&K, because uh, what you can do is actually you can adjust it uh, individually, digit by digit. We're going to put it into uh, constant current mode, and um, put half an amp through it, and then uh, wonderful on-off button you can use, that's great. So it tells me that uh, it's running about 5.06 volts and running uh, about uh, half an amp. Um, we do come down here, and uh, sure enough, of course, the meter is reading half an amp. That's great. And uh, what we see here is a burden voltage. Now it's showing negative because basically I've, I've connected my leads backwards. But it doesn't make much, much difference. The uh, the key factor here is the amplitude, and um, so. We have half an amp with a burden voltage of 20 millivolts. So the math is pretty simple. Uh, basically, uh, what we have is um, we have an amp rating, um, and we put in half an amp, and we had a V drop over the meter of uh, 20.3 millivolts. And basically, Ohm's law obviously tells us that uh, the equivalent resistance is R equals V over I. And if you do the math, you have an equivalent resistance of 40.6 milliohms. Now, actually, when you talk about burden voltages, they'll always talk about voltage drop per amp, and we'll convert that in a second. But um, before we do that, uh, did a few more measurements. Did it 1 amp, did it 1 and a half amps just to make sure that uh, we have a few data points because there's no point in just working off one uh, at one amp uh, measured 40.7 millivolt drop at one and a half amps measured 61.2 uh, millivolt drop and uh, oh, clever, I got my column there, well let's put resistance over here so the R equivalent 
therefore these three values worked out to 40.6, uh, 40.8, uh, pardon me, 40.7, and 40.8. Now, this is what we expect. We expect this to be a basically a linear value. If you take uh, an average there, um, sure enough, it's like 40.7 milliohms. Uh, but that makes a lot of sense. Uh, if uh, you take a look at a meter, basically, it's uh, always a small piece of wire inside the meter, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, and uh, so basically, what happens is every time you put uh, this Fluke 17B uh, on the 10 amp range into a circuit, it's basically putting a 40.7 milliohm resistor. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but you know you're kind of into the resistance of batteries, and all of a sudden, if you're doing kind of high amp, 5, 10 amp measurement work. Uh, this voltage can be quite significant. For example, if you have 10 amps right at this meter, you're going to drop uh, 407 millivolts uh, because V equals I times R. And so just move the decimal over if it's 10 amps. Um, and that's actually uh, you know, four tenths of a volt, which actually is quite significant. Um, so something you have to be really aware of when you're using a, a multimeter to measure current. So to basically round out the test, uh, obviously you want to uh, measure the milliamp at range, the microamp range, because what's going to happen is as the switch switches over, it switches in a different series resistor which has an increasingly high resistance. Now, the other thing you got to do, of course, you generally have to change out your resistor. I have a 10 ohm resistor here, which is really great for um, a 10 amp service, but uh, as we go into the 1 amp service, uh, you've got to pull yourself up with a higher resistance so you get a, uh, you can create a more meaningful voltage drop. So. Um, Wonderful DigiKey always comes to your rescue and uh, we'll take a look at those. The only thing, the other thing you have to be really careful of, this is where actually again this meter really, this power supply really uh, excels, is you need to make sure you don't blow your meter up and blow the fuse because they're kind of expensive things to get replaced. So, nice thing about the B and K is you can actually adjust which digit you want to adjust. So, I can adjust well down here uh, into the individual milliamp and I'll keep it at zero to start with and just curl the meter up. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, milliamp uh, range of this meter. So what I've got here, I'll, um, I'll turn the supply on. Uh, I got it set for 15 volts, but zero current. I'll be in constant uh, current mode, and this is a really cool thing. So I can actually adjust it up for um, exactly 10 milliamps, and it comes out to my meter. Um, sure enough, uh, we're registering about. 9.6 milliamps, and more importantly, 23.1 uh, millivolts. So, uh, just like before, basically, we'll take some measurements at various currents to make sure we can do a bit of curve fitting, and uh, we'll see what the results look like. So now here, I took uh, four measurements, basically, uh, ran um, milliamps in this column. The voltage drop over the meter here, and then we're going to calculate the equivalent resistance of the meter. So, uh, at um, normally 10 milliamps is actually 9.4 milliamps measured. Uh, we had a 22.7 millivolts drop, and then at 19.1 uh, measured uh, 46.2. Uh, and at 28.9, measured 69.9. If you do the math, basically resistance uh, is equal to the voltage drop divided by milliamps. Uh, obviously, just ohms law. Uh, rather than milliohms, now what we see is what we see is ohms, right? 2.41 ohms. That makes a lot of sense because when you try to measure a smaller current, uh, you have to put in a larger equivalent resistance to create an, a realistic voltage to measure. And we'll go to that in a second, but let's just first check the math here. Um, this is also 2.41 ohms, and this is 2.42. Okay, so um, looking fairly linear, that's kind of what you expect. Essentially, the meter just is a resistor with a fuse in series, hopefully, uh, if it's a good meter, as uh, you want to protect yourself in case you overloads. Um, so let's call that uh, 2.4. Mm. Well. 2.41 probably, maybe it might 2.242 um, uh, ohms. So the question of course is, you know, what's going on with the guy who uh, designed the meter, what's he up to? Uh, basically if we um, draw the meter as a simplified box and we put the terminal here for the amps and the terminal here for the common 
that's just going out to our circuit. Um, inside the meter here, basically, um, not too special. There's basically a resistor, uh, and a, on a decent meter, of course, it needs to be a fuse just in case you overload it. Uh, what simply happens is as you, push, as you pass the current through the resistor, it creates, of course, a voltage. And this is going to go into um, an instrumentation amplifier. I'll just draw it like this. Basically, it measures the, the difference of the voltage and produces the voltage here, and that will go off into our, um, our uh, integrated circuit, which actually does the uh, voltage con to uh, uh, digital conversion and displays it on the circuit. Um, you can see here, if you're passing like a, a big current, like 10 amps, when we hit, we're in the 10 amp range, uh, we found out that the resistance was equal to about 40.6 milliohms. And that makes sense because you've passed 10 amps at 46, you create 0.4 volts. That's a pretty easy, easy uh, voltage to measure. You have an instrumentation amplifier multiplied by 10, you get a very realistic voltage here that can go into a digital uh, analog to digital converter uh, and very easily seen. Uh, the thing is, you, when you put into the milliamp range, and if you didn't switch out this resistor for a higher value of resistance, you could see what would happen. Let's try, say you're trying to measure a milliamp of current and you had a 40.6 milliohm resistor, so you get this voltage drop v equals I times R, and be 1 milliamp times 40.6 milliamps, and you get like 40 microvolts. And even if it's multiplied by 10 or even 100, you know, you're not getting a lot of voltage swing here. So what happens in any meter, as you move the dial knob, basically it selects a higher value resistor. And we measure that, right? When you're in the milliamp range, the, the fluke meter has a 2.4 ohm resistor. Now, for the microamp range, quite frankly, it's really easy to blow the fuse up. And I'm not so keen on that. Um, but when we get the microamp range, actually, we should be seeing significant resistance between the uh, between the current terminal, and uh, we may actually be able to measure that directly. So uh, again, we'll uh, take a few meters here, and uh, what we'll do is use this one to measure current mode, or in the current mode, pardon me, not so much measuring here. Uh, and here we're just going to turn our other meter here into a, uh, a no meter. And uh, we'll just measure the terminal across and see what it tells us in terms of uh, resistance. And uh, we'll use just some straightforward banana jacks. And the meter ranges away, and uh, it tells us that it's actually um, an equivalent resistance of 100.2, oh, pardon me, about 100.1 ohms. And that's a fairly significant resistance, so we can probably even directly measure the milliamp range. Let's see if it comes up to the value that we measured. 2.2, uh, 2.2 ohms. Excellent. Good correlation. Now, of course, you might ask yourself, well, geez, why don't we just measure the, the current with that? And you can see very quick what the problem is, is when you're in the amp range, and we've got to move this uh, meter lead over to the um, 10 amp range. It's not very realistic doing a direct measurement because it was only 40 or 41 milliohms. And what we get here is um, basically, if I get bleeds in the right area here, read zero. Um, and of course, that's because this meter here can't really read milli ohms. Hopefully, that was helpful uh, to the question that uh, the original author asked me about on the, the current ranges for the fluke meters. Um, again, right, these are all really typical. Uh, these aren't really surprising ranges. Um, good values. Uh, again, fluke meters look pretty decent in this area.